Hello, I'm Sandra Ross and we are here this morning in the beautiful Wildflower Women exhibition and I'm about to speak to Julie Gibbs about this mammoth work here called Impermanence. Julie, I'm very interested in the logistics of creating a work this size. Can you give us some insights on how you achieve this? Well, creating a work of four metres is always hard. It's not the longest work I've done. I've done a nine metre piece in the past, but this was going to be five metres and I chopped it back to four for the size. But working in my studio, it's always tricky. I have to roll up from one end and I have it standing up like this and I can only work on it at about maybe two metres, one and a half metres, two metres at a time. So then after I've done the large bits, I then take it down and put it across a table and work on it like a metre at a time from either side. It, it is tricky, it's problematic, but I enjoy the whole process, it's great. So with this four metre work I've been inspired by the weekend that we did out at Rainbow Beach in 219, I think it was 219, memory fades, and we did a walk up to Carlo Sandblo and from the top of Carlo Sandblo, from one end you can see the Bobble Mountain in one side and at the other end you can see Double Island Point. So this was the inspiration for the weekend as where we were and we saw so much wildflower in different spots. And so this painting here, painting, drawing, sorry, has been inspired by some of the wildflowers that really got my attention while we were walking around the area. And two in particular in this paint, this drawing, I've got to get away from the painting. This drawing at either end, one right on the right and one right at the left down the bottom, were the two, two plants that really captured my passion. At this end we have the Wallomhakia and the seed pod for the Wallomhakia. It's a tiny little flower that looks like Arabic calligraphy and it just inspired me no end. And then at the other end, down here in the, where I've signed my name, we have the flying duck orchid which captured everybody's attention. It is so tiny, so delicious to look at and is just a treat. Uh, so in between those two, there's, there's about 15 native plants represented in this work and it, I've called it impermanence because of the way that this environment isn't permanent and it fades in and out just like you would see that environment. You know, some of it is uh, lost and brought back and one here, this spiral Gosh, I can't remember the name of it, but it is endangered. So I was trying to include and make people aware of plants that could be endangered, if they're disappearing, and it was a process to get to that point. But it's interesting that we, this area of the Wallop extended so far down the New South Wales coast and up the Queensland coast, and nowadays we visit them as special locations where once they were everywhere, and it, it's interesting how we treat nature now. We go on a walk to a specific spot because the wildflowers are out there where they normally would have been everywhere. Julie, the um, scale of this work is really interesting. And I understand you made some preliminary drawings in situ for this work. Can you talk a little bit more about this? So, to get the, the tonal quality in here and the layering in the background, by using the inks over top of each other, letting them dribble and work, I've also uh, made a bit of a darkness, darkness area to give that depth by using iron water, which reacts differently with the different colours that I use and at the strength that I would use it. So these, uh, the areas of the back here, uh, are using the iron water. And then I would be very naughty, but it's also a reflection of humankind's effect on the environment and the use of our chemicals. I've also used bleach to highlight. 
some areas and it's made quite a contrast in there and added that little jewel that just comes out and gets you. Again, who knows, it might eat into my paper. <laughs> I had no idea. I'm experimenting. But uh, the, even with the masking fluid, there's layers on layers of things that have gone on. Hey Julie, do you have any kind of favourite parts in this work? Is there, is there anything that you, you know, particularly love? Mm. About it? Good question, Sandra, because it's a, in four metres you think you would, but I actually tried to make every part as I came to it sing to me. Uh, so it held a special spot all the way along. So there are lots of little bits, and especially when you get into the little detail bits in the background, where I got carried away with, you know, got a little bit sort of yeah, overprotective of those there's areas. Some absolutely beautiful areas in this, and I mean the whole drawing. Um, I love the way you've used the the negative and the positive, you know, and played with that. The the positive becomes the negative, and the negative becomes the positive. Yes. And I know you had um, we had a discussion about this about the. Yeah, and somebody some... thought they were bones, you know, that looked like bones. Yeah. And that adds to the whole meaning behind the work about impermanence and the disappearance of plants. Even though plants don't have a bone, mm -hmm. it, you could almost say that this is the residue of a plant, you know, that's disappearing yes. and, and sacred yes. to us, you know, sacred. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Well, Julie, thanks so much for giving us some insight, some more insight into your work. Um, it's a it's an amazing piece and you know I as an artist think about you know how logistically you you must have um, you know put it out on your mm. rolled it out on your table and worked on parts but thinking of the whole yes. so you know it, it's, it, it really took a while is. before you saw the four meters you had to take it somewhere and lay it on a floor like to, bring, see it. to see the, how far you'd got and what you had done. Yeah. Yes, it's a tricky one. Yeah. Well, thank you, Julie. And thank you. Remember to come and have a look at this exhibition, Wildflower Women 3. It's on here at the Gympie Regional Gallery until the 28th of November. And we have lots of public programs coming up uh, where you can come and see Julie. Uh, you can make all sorts of amazing things. So check out the website and we'll see you here in the gallery.